Hello, everyone. We are back with ESPN Crick Info's Ton Talks brought to you by Superscript. I'm Alexis Nunes, and joining me on today's show, we have got the man, the myth, the legend that is former England Test batsman Ian Bell and radio DJ Toby Tarrant. So as you have guessed, this whole show is all about the 100, and we are officially one week in, and we have been treated to some exciting matches. Let's quickly recap exactly what's happened. We kick things off with the Oval Invincibles beating Manchester Originals on the 98th ball. Then history was made when Marcia Delanga took the first FIFA in the 100 for the Trent Rockets. India all-rounder Jamima Rodriguez hit a blistering 92 not out versus the Welsh Fire before 16, yes, 16-year-old 16 Alice Capsey burst onto the scene with 59 of 41 for the Oval Invincibles versus the London Spirits. Case Ahmed took four for 13 for the Welsh Fire versus the Northern Superchargers before Matt Parkinson took four for nine against Birmingham Phoenix. Fireworks from Alex Hales then sealed an unlikely win for the Trent Rockets before Smriti Mandana showed some magic for the Southern Brave up against the Welsh Fire. So, gentlemen, I mean, so many highlights so far this week. I remember when we kicked off the show, I was saying even I wasn't fully on board of the 100 bus. I was being very much like my father and saying, oh, do we really need to deviate away from the game that we love so much? But Ian, let me start with you as a man who actually played with it, um, played the sport at the highest level. How have you been enjoying it? Oh, I've really enjoyed it so far. I mean, again, I was probably like you. I was very 50-50 um, when you read the rules, changes and everything that was going on. So I was really on the fence, wanted to see it. Um, and now being involved with the Birmingham Phoenix, uh, certainly from a batting point of view and being there, watching the sessions, seeing the planning before games. I mean, this is taking very, very serious as well. Very much like the IPL or the, the Big Bash, the detail into the matchups, bowlers v batters, and who's going to bowl the 10, uh, ten ball um, uh, period in the game. Uh, it's been really interesting. And also just seeing the crowds as well. Certainly at Edge Baston and Old Traffic of the Day, it, it was, it's, it's been very interesting. As I said, I think I walking into it, I wasn't quite sure, um, mm. but I've enjoyed every minute of what I've seen as a cricket fan. Uh, even though I'm a, a purist, a test match, you know, that's where I love watching and being. Um, but I have enjoyed it so far. And Toby, what about you? Obviously, as a, a lover of the sport and a fan of the sport like myself, um, are you kind of surprised that it seems to have really done its job and in this last week gotten so many people looking at cricket again? Yeah, it, um, I, I think I'm very much the same as perhaps you two were, that I was probably more on the side of being actually anti the 100 before it started. That's good. Be a pure man. Don't worry. We're trying to protect <laughs> well, our sport. But anyway. Well, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm the same as you guys. I like five day long test matches. I like red ball cricket. You know, that is where my heart always is, you know, and, and it always will be. But that doesn't mean that there's not space for other tournaments. So I was probably a bit anti the 100 before it started. But as soon as it got underway, you realised it was cricket. And most importantly, like Ian mentioned there, good cricket, genuinely good cricketers showing off their skills and their talent. And that's what's made it very, very watchable. And so I've, I'm very happy to eat a lot of humble pie. I'm not a proud man. I'll eat some humble pie and admit that it's been, it's been really impressive. Me as a cricket fan and a, still a cricket player at my, uh, on a Saturday for my club team, Cricket's sexy. Kind of that in. Exactly, yeah. It's not quite the same. <laughs> You're only up beside Ian Bell. People <laughs> yeah, have to know your pedigree too. <laughs> yeah, not quite the same standard as Ian Bell. I'm going to be honest with you, but you know, I, I still consider myself a cricketer, and it's not the <laughs> sexiest sport in the world, and I know that. But at the moment, cricket's sexy. People are talking about it, so I'm I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm absolutely buzzing. I've been baking humble pie all week because I've been working um, the Olympics a little bit as well for ESPN, and I must say, some of the matches I should have been watching. I've actually been watching the 100 instead, instead of those matches. So I've been naughty, naughty, but absolutely on board. So I did give a taste of some of the highlights that, you know, we've enjoyed in this last first week of the 100. Um, but I want to know from you guys, your top performers and probably those that might need to pull up their socks a bit. But of course, let's always start with the good. I mean, there's so many names to list from. But Ian, let's start with you because you are the man, the myth, the legend. Who's been your top performer, both men and women? Well, look, I think frustratingly the other day we saw Matt Parkinson bowl really well against us the other day, so I had to sit and witness that one. So that was a bit annoying, but again, we saw him actually bowl some beautiful deliveries in, in the white ball series just gone recently when he got his opportunity. Um, so he's been fantastic. Uh, I actually enjoyed, I mean, uh, obviously, again, I think the platform that both, the, you know, the women's and the males game on at the same time, it's been fantastic, all on terrestrial TV. What I did enjoy watching, actually, when I talked, it was Sarah Taylor coming out of retirement and catching that, 
a great catch down the leg side of the day. I mean, she's a pure, amazing wicketkeeper. Um, so that was really one of my highlights. I just really struck out because we haven't seen her for a while. And then all of a sudden she's out of retirement and make it look like she's been doing it um, all the time. But the standard has been fantastic. Surprised I even had to um, almost appeal that because once if Sarah Taylor says she caught something, you know she caught it. Just start walking. Honestly, I was like, it's absolutely amazing. Toby, what about you? Uh, yeah, with Sarah Taylor, it's been great to see her back on a cricket pitch. And also Alex Hartley, who had slightly fallen out yeah. of love with the game by her own admission. And it's great to see her playing with a smile on her face as well. So the, the women's game has been absolutely superb. Uh, but for me, I mean, March of the Langer taking five wickets. I, I, I didn't know if we'd see 100-100 first or 100 5 for, But I thought we'd probably see 100 first because... I just didn't think 20 balls was enough time to take five wickets. But DeLanger, who's absolutely box office to watch, him taking five wickets was a standout for me. And we mentioned Parkinson. We should mention he had a couple of balls left, so he could have taken six wickets if he'd, if he'd bowled all his 20. So, um, yeah, really impressed by the bowlers. These poor bowlers, the games are getting shorter and shorter and shorter, and they keep they keep performing. So, yeah, very nice to see DeLanger take that. Michelle Pfeiffer, very, very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> you never get tired of hearing that i mean there's still a ton of other ones we'll stick a uh, um we'll stick a pin in parkinson because i definitely want to talk about him for a bit but before we do get to him i just have to talk about well there is jemima rodriguez of course but a certain 16 year old alice capsi that walked out to lords and hit a half century and you know i think it was nasser hussein who was on comms and he was saying you know, some of the top cricketers in the world wait years before they can make a 50 at Lords. And here she comes, Cam Cool collected at 16. I mean, Ian, what did you think of, you know, what a prodigy she probably is? Yeah, incredible. And like you said, um, you know, doing it at Lords, the home of cricket is an amazing for any player at any stages of their career when you, certainly if you get on the honours board, but yeah, performing at the home of cricket is special. I have to talk about Alex Hales as well, because, you know, there's always a Alex Hales should be playing for England conversation floating around because... He's just absolutely in his element when it's, you know, the shorter formats of the game. And now here we have one of them, a new one. And he just looked in on song, didn't he? Yeah, and I think that he had a point to prove there. You've got Ben Stokes and Joe Root on that pitch during that game. You've got the England captain at the moment, the England vice captain and probably best player in Ben Stokes as well. So I think maybe there was a bit more to prove from Alex Hales. Um, look, I, I, I don't know if we'll ever see Alex Hales in an England shirt again because... I don't know what else he can do to get recalled up to the side. However, whoever does get him in franchise cricket around the world is getting an unbelievable batsman. So destructive on his day. And, and he did it again the other night, as he so often does. Incredible to watch. All right. Well, now we can definitely talk about Matt Parkinson. Um, Belly, I have to almost tell you, look away, but don't worry. This is not a highlights <laughs> package. Um, a legend of bowling himself, Shane Warren. Let's hear what he had to say. I think Parkinson, he's, you know, I think he's very, very good. I really like the look of the way he bowls. I think he's a great addition to the white ball cricket, but I think he's also, I, I see him playing a huge part in test cricket, especially in Australia. I wouldn't be surprised in that first test match at the Gabba that he's actually penciled in the 11, in the playing 11. All right, so high praise there coming from uh, Shane Warren. I'm sure he wouldn't like to see the strongest England side going up against his Aussie boys down under. But Ian, let's go to you for this one, because of course, test cricket is you love. Matt Parkinson, part of the test side, has he written himself almost into that England test side for the Ashes, as Warren is kind of suggesting? Well, I don't think Warren is trying to, I don't think he's ever trying to help England out. That is for sure. <laughs> so whether he wants Australia to face him, I'm not sure, or he wants him to be successful. Um, look, I think Parkinson at the moment, white ball cricket is there and thereabouts. Obviously, he's got uh, Adil Rashid ahead of him, who is a world-class performer now, so consistent. I'd be surprised if he plays in Australia, personally. I think watching Parkinson, I don't necessarily think he absolutely, even though there's improvement, um, is the top of the pecking order in England's white ball spinners at the moment. But I do like what I see. Again, this is what the 100's for, is to st stick yeah. guys like this on the stage and to hopefully advance them going on and play for England. I think he'll have to show us if he can bat with as much swagger with specs on as Jack Leach, if he really wants to give him a, a run for his money in that side. But Toby, I mean, you know, as we were talking, England in white ball cricket is just absolutely stacked. It's like England's football team, you know, as well. Um, but looking at Parkinson, if it's not the Ashes, maybe with the T20 World Cup coming up um, as a fan, would you like to see him in there? Yeah, I think, weirdly, he's... a probably a white ball specialist bowler at the moment, but he's actually more likely maybe to get in the test team because as Ian mentioned there, 
Adil Rashid, who was just untouchable in that white ball team. Uh, and also Mo and Ali, because what Mo offers with the bat as well. So it's a very difficult team to break into. I mean, would, would we like to see him play at the Ashes? I think so, because leg spin, you know, I talked about cricket being sexy. Well, leg spin's the sexy version of spin bowling, isn't it? You know, Jack Leach, God love him. He always delivers. He always performs for England. But he's very much a container, like Ian said there. You know, you know what you're going to get from Jack Leach. He's going to hold up an end. He's not going to let you down. But leg spin... Shane Warne made it sexy. It's exciting. You know, there, there's something about the fact that it can go wrong that makes it good to watch. So I think he's certainly got a great chance of being on that flight to Australia. Whether he plays the first test in Australia, don't know. Don't know. But uh, it's nice to us, for us to have spin options. We don't usually have many spinners to choose from. So it's nice to be talking about a spinner at all, really. All right. Well, with that said, then, um, anyone else, Ian, I'll throw it back to you now that you probably are expecting a bit more from. Like we said, we know it could come, but, you know, men and women's side... What are you thinking? You know what? Obviously, having watched the Phoenix train recently, there's a lad called Finn Allen from New Zealand who's with us. And if there's anyone I don't like throwing balls to because you could get hit and it comes back at you at a rate of knots, it's him. So I just want to see him bat. I want to see him bat for 50 balls in 100 because it could be incredible. I know in New Zealand, he's, he's um, seen as their, one of their big, young, you know, uh, future players at the age of 22. So if he gets going, I mean, you know, his strike rates go up way past 200 and... Like I said, hits the ball with so much power. Hasn't quite got going yet for us. Um, but when I've watched him in training, if he does get going, there's going to be a lot of talk about him. All right. Well, um, we're not VIPs quite like Belly, but don't worry. We're going to make it to some matches. I'm actually going on Sunday and on Monday. Toby, I don't think you've been to a match yet, have you? I haven't yet. I haven't yet, but I've got my first invite. I've been wait I've been desperately waiting. My phone's on all day. If anyone wants to call me and give me some tickets, I've been waiting for the call up. But uh, yeah, maybe it's they knew that I was negative about the tournament before it started. But no, uh, London Spirit, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and check out at Lords on Tuesday. They very kindly invited me along to a game. So looking forward to that. And uh, it sh that should be a really exciting game. It'd be good to see Owen Morgan having a bat and uh, have a night, of course, as well, captaining them. Yeah. That's how you know you're VIP when you get invited to go to places. I actually <laughs> bought my tickets for Sunday. But don't worry, I did get invited to the Oval on Monday. So nice. don't you worry about that. Don't yeah. you worry about I mean, that. My little I, VIP status is coming. I could swallow <laughs> my pride and buy tickets like everybody else. But my ego, only wouldn't, 30 my quid. ego wouldn't let me. So uh, I waited for my to, to get a WhatsApp and it arrived. So yeah, I'm going, going along with you. Oh, goodness. Men and their egos. We need to cue this Beyonce <laughs> song coming up. But before we get to Beyonce songs, um, Toby, I want to get I want to get from you the top five things to take and maybe that you'll be taking to your game of the hundred. Yeah, so I go to a lot of cricket and the most important things are you've got to wear a Hawaiian shirt. Even if it's eight degrees and raining, you've got to wear a Hawaiian shirt. You've got to look colourful. You've got to add a bit of colour to the crowd. You can't just sit there in a bland T-shirt. I mean, I know I'm wearing the world's most boring T-shirt at the moment, <laughs> but you've got to have a Hawaiian shirt on. Uh, and you, you go over there, Lords. Uh, yeah, I, I'll always oh. remember, even at, even at Lords. I know it's probably sacrilegious, and I'm sure WG Grace is probably <laughs> turning in his grave at some of the outfits in the crowd nowadays. But a wine shirt and uh, and four pints of Guinness. You always need to take in four cans of Guinness as well. That's because you, if you're going to sit there in a stupid shirt, you need a bit of alcohol so you can relax a little <laughs> bit and feel a bit more comfortable when you're wearing it. Uh, you, you've got to make sure you bring in four cans of Guinness. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm going to start taking along, I think, is a lyrics sheet for all the songs that the DJs play. Because I've noticed that nobody really knows the words. They know, <laughs> everybody knows Sweet Caroline, sort of, <sighs> sort of knows Sweet Caroline, but even they get a bit nervous during the verses. Um, <laughs> Jeff Beck, hey ho, silver lining that they like playing at the minute. Nobody knows the words to that apart from the one line. So obviously it's my job as a radio presenter, I can't be caught on camera singing along the wrong words to, to all the songs. <laughs> so I'm going to bring along a lyric sheet and make sure that, uh, that I don't make an idiot of myself on the big camera. And then I'll probably take some wicket keeping gloves. I'm sat at Long On on, on okay. Tuesday. So if a catch yeah. comes my way, again, I still play cricket on a Saturday. I can't have my captain seeing me dropping catches in the crowd. Otherwise, You're hoping if there's a, a few COVID <laughs> cases you're in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you know I was about to say, is this like the third time that he's dropped in that he's played cricket? Yeah, it's he's like, available. Yeah, I'm a radio DJ, but I play cricket. Get him on the Finally, the fifth thing I put down was I'm just going to bring my whole kit bag in case anybody does drop out of the game at the last minute. So, 
I'm just saying I'm available, that we've got enough people missing from COVID. I mean, I can't do any worse than Joe Root, can I? I've, I've been... <laughs> oh, <laughs> shots fired. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Fair play. But on the lyrics one, I think it's quite hard to remember any lyrics after four yeah. cans of Guinness. That's true. That, could be, that might be my problem. That might be where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> right. Moving on now, because we've spoken about Joe Root, who's actually leaving for England duty. Um, so are a couple other big names as well, because there is a small matter of a test series against India, which as the purists that we are, we know that that's definitely going to come first over any white ball contract you can get. Um, but now I want to know, in your opinion, guys, who's probably going to be worrying the most? Um, I want to start off, Ian, with the Welsh fire, because Johnny... Bearstow, oh my goodness 128 runs in his two innings I mean he's the captain as well he's overseen their two wins and like I said contributed to two half centuries he's also their wicket keeper so they're you know losing so many different faces with just this one player how do the Welsh fire even cope uh, it will be hard you're absolutely right I mean out of all the franchises there I mean that's probably the biggest one isn't it like you said there they probably built that team around Johnny Bairstow, uh, not expecting him to leave. And like you said, keeper, captain, um, you know, top batsman. And we've seen what he can do. So, yeah, that's a huge loss for them. And they'll be frustrated if he's not in the 11. He's just sat there carrying drinks for sure. That would be uh, a bit of an annoyance. Uh, you know, the other night, there was a potential for that game to go close the other night. There was a yeah. point where it, it looked very gettable, that score. And you saw Johnny Bairstow geeing everybody up and, uh, and supporting his bowlers and actually being really good behind the stumps as well. He took an important catch. So I think they're going to just miss him because he contributes to every phase of the game. So I, I do think out of all the teams, he is probably going to be the biggest loss out of all the England boys going. Massive loss indeed. But as you know, Belly was saying, a test series against India or a series against India on any planet is a massive one. But speaking of India, I want to talk about the Indian women now so far and the impact that they've had um, in the women's tournament. <laughs> I really can't start talking about Indian women without speaking about Jemima Rodriguez because unbelievable batting from this youngster. Sometimes seeing her play and hearing her talk, you forget just how young she really is. Um, and I remember a, a feature that she did back with the ICC, I think in 2018, Ian, where she said, where Harman Preet Kura actually came out and said that she's not one that likes to hang around and waste time at the wicket for too long. She she just really wants to go out there and get after it from the very first ball. So has she found pretty much her perfect format now? Uh, I think so. I mean, it's been great. I mean, I, I don't think, again, like T20 will be exactly the same for her as well. I mean, but it's been brilliant to see. Again, it's, it's scary to think of the talent that comes out of India, um, you know, and we're seeing and it's going to gather pace so quickly as well. Um, and it's great to see all their the girls playing um, and being allowed to play in this tournament as well, because it makes it a better tournament. Like you said, the talent they have, um, and we've seen it in the men's game, you know, they set that team to Sri Lanka as well. It's just full of IPL superstars as well. So I just see that how the, the women's game in India is going to keep growing and they've got role models that are playing that style of cricket as well. So aggressive, so enjoyable, so fun to watch. So yeah, brilliant, brilliant to see. And hopefully that continues through the tournament. 28 boundaries so far from Jamima Rodriguez. I mean, Toby, how much have you enjoyed watching her? Yeah, she's an absolute joy to watch. And uh, and also, Verma hasn't really got going massively yeah. yet, but she is probably the one to watch. I mean, we mentioned Capsi earlier, 16 years old. Well, Verma's a comparative veteran at the age of 17 and made her debut at 15 years old. And I think women's cricket's in such a great place at the moment yeah. that we're going to see a lot of this because there's a whole new generation of women cricketers coming through that are going to be better than any women cricketers I think we've ever seen before because of how much money's gone into the game over the last few years. And India, a country that has always been obsessed with cricket, but it's great to see finally the England women team catching up with the men's team as well. And, and, and I think I think over the next 10, 20, 30 years, I, I think, you know, I mean, they've got a billion people to choose from and uh, they quite like cricket. I, I think Verma is the start of a whole new age of Indian dominance, really, in, in the women's game. And hopefully they're available for the 100 uh, this season, next season as well. Hopefully we'll see more and more of them coming over here because they set the bar so high for everyone. Perfect. Well, final segment now, and it's ending on a high because we've got some exciting videos probably to watch. And I know both of you are so used to being in front of a microphone right now and may fancy yourselves as commentators. Well, I know one definitely is. Toby's used to being on the radio as well and ain't no cricket like village cricket. So 
one can be color commentator and one can be the main commentator. But Toby, I'm going to let you take the lead as a presenter. And Ian, you can provide some analysis. First video is coming all the way from Ireland, Malahide versus Pembroke. Have a look at this. Okay, here we go. Leonard with the ball in hand, sun reflecting off his bald head, tosses it up with a bit of confidence, up to the crease. Balls, looks like leg spin. Oh, and the batsman leaves it, and it's an absolute peach. It looks a half between a Matt Parkinson delivery with the Imran Tahir celebration. <laughs> so it's, uh, I mean, that is two types of leads, isn't it? We've all been there where you've left one, not necessarily hit leg stump, maybe off stump, but uh, yeah, beautiful bit of bowling. That bowler has very indeed. different hair to Imran Tahir. I was going to say, are you Shane Warren in disguise or it's more, are you Imran Tahir in disguise? Yeah. Because he was, go he was ready to bowl, get the wicket, and then run to the Olympics, probably, to represent Team GB <laughs> camp to track and field. But, you know, that's, that's why we love village cricket. Next one is coming from Sandersted Cricket Club. Let's have a look at this one. And how is this for um aggressive appeal, if you will? I know Sandersted well. They used to be in my league. Here we go. <laughs> Big man using all of his experience there. He's gone up. The umpire is having absolutely none of it, but you don't obviously don't get And at this level, you can bully umpires into a decision there. What he's not been helped by there is, whilst he's giving it the big his wicketkeeper is offering absolutely nothing. Uh, nothing. The, uh, the first thing I say as a bowler to my wicketkeeper in my first slip is we go up for everything. And as you can see there, he's really been let down by his wicketkeeper. But Ian, it looked to me like sliding down leg, but bowlers always think it's out, don't they? Yeah, it looks like a short broad appeal. It will appeal for absolutely everything. Um, but no, you're right. The keeper's giving him nothing. <laughs> but the umpire, fair play to the, the, the little fella there by the looks of it. I mean, he stood strong there, hasn't he? I mean, that's intimidating that. Looking just to intimidate the umpire. But what is the keeper doing? Giving nothing. Absolutely nothing. I don't know, but props to the umpire indeed, because I would have been bullied into it. He's, look at, he's roaring red as well. <laughs> He's like a dragon. All right, final one now. This is coming from North Middlesex Cricket Club, and we're looking at some youngsters here. Um, this is from a 17-year-old, by the way. So let's have a look at him. 34 for nine. Look at this field. A good old-fashioned, well, I would say a ring field, but it's the smallest ring field I've ever seen. Bowlers up to the stumps. Beautiful action. Bit of off spin. Bowled him. And they're off. And they're off. 34 all out. And a hat trick by the look of things. What a way to do it. I love that. I don't know what age that stops, but I remember playing cricket when I was that age. And no matter what the situation of the game, if somebody was on a hat trick, you put everybody round the bat. And sadly, as cricket gets a bit more serious, as you get a bit older, you stop doing that. So it's nice to see a proper ring field. In the end, he didn't even need them. Clean bowled them anyway. Well, first thing, have they told them it was a four-day game when it's actually a T20 game? Because they've come in white. Very <laughs> colour clothing. There's a white side screen with a white ball. I don't blame the batter for that. How do you just take off a white side screen? We move. Anyways, thank you so much, gentlemen. We're going to fairly bring this show to an end. Before we go, Betty, we know that you're off, of course, with the Birmingham Phoenix. What, um, what can we expect from you guys coming up then? Just hopefully, like I said, some of the, the batters fire and some entertaining cricket. Obviously, I thought the, the Parkinson was brilliant the other night, but the wicket was, I don't think it was ideal for this format. I think we won, I think it was one six in both games on that day, which I suppose we want to see a bit more than that. So hopefully when we get down to Southampton, it's going to be a good pitch, two good teams. Uh, and like I said, it's going to be hopefully one of the games of the tournament. And Toby, are you going with the London spirit then to win it all? Since that's probably the team that's invited you, so you might as well stick with them. You can well, get winner's medal at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is it. I haven't actually officially picked my side yet, but I am open to bribes, so the ticket helps. But I'm going to wait and see who's really good. I'm going to watch a few more games, and then when it looks like I've got the best team, then I'll probably just follow them. I'm a, I'm a Liverpool fan from London, so I'm a glory supporter. So I'll, I'll just pick <laughs> oh. whoever wins, basically. Is that a wrap on this edition of Ton Talk brought to you by Superscripts? Thanks so much to the man, the myth, the legend that is Ian Bell. We wish you all the best for this one. Now we know who to hit up for some tickets. I begrudgingly say thanks to Toby. You're absolutely brilliant. Definitely hope we get to chat again, especially for the next England West Indies series. Okay, thanks so much, gentlemen. Thanks to everyone for watching and please join us again next week for more Ton Talks.